Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So you may have heard, but last week, Texas passed its heartbeat bill, banning abortions after six weeks. In response, everyone's favorite representative, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, took to CNN to defend the supposed right to kill an unborn baby. Not the baby of a woman, of course, but rather of a menstruating person. Let's watch, and I will then offer her a counterpoint. In recent years, the political landscape has become increasingly divided, with polarizing debates emerging on various social, cultural, and moral issues. Among the most contentious is the topic of abortion. This debate resurfaced recently when Texas passed its heartbeat bill, which bans abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. The bill sparked outrage from liberal politicians and activists, including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, who voiced her objections on national television. Well, I find Governor Abbott's comments disgusting, and I think there's twofold. One, I don't know if he is familiar with a menstruating person's body. In fact, I do know that he's not familiar with a woman, with a, a, a female or menstruating person's body, because if he did, he would know that you don't have six weeks. Is that quote unquote six weeks? And I'm sorry, we have to break it down on, you know, break down biology 101 on national television. But in case no one has informed him before in our life, in his life, six weeks pregnant means two weeks late for your period. And two weeks late on your period for any person, any person with a menstrual cycle, can happen if you're stressed, if your diet changes, or for really no reason at all. As Republicans, it is imperative to stand with voices like Candace Owens, who champion truth, biological reality, and the sanctity of life. Let's begin with AOC's remarks on CNN, where she criticized the Texas heartbeat bill. I think we are all Anderson Cooper, who's kind of just like, mm, not really sure what's going on here. Why can't you say woman? Why can't you say women? So of course, the internet exploded with this, going how bizarre that she feels that she can't even say woman or women. And she claimed that the bill is out of touch with the biological realities of women's bodies, arguing that the six week time frame is insufficient for women to discover they are pregnant. While this argument is not new, AOC's approach to the issue quickly turned controversial when she referred to women as menstruating persons. This politically correct, gender-neutral language has become a hallmark of the left's attempt to dismantle traditional gender norms, and it speaks to a larger agenda that seeks to redefine not only womanhood, but also fundamental truth. On Twitter, she hit back. And she said, not just women, trans men and non-binary people can also menstruate. Some women also don't menstruate for many reasons, including surviving cancer that required a hysterectomy. GOP mad at this are protecting the patriarchal idea, buzzword, feminist buzzword, that women are most valuable as uterus holders. And then uh, she went on and said a few more things. She said, trans two-spirit and non-binary people have always existed and will always exist. People can stay mad about it if they want, or they can grow up peace sign, rainbow flag. Not sure what that flex flag is, but <laughs> I'm sure the rainbow flag gave birth to it, whatever it is. I think, I think somebody's telling me in my ear it's a trans flag. So many flags, so, so much fun. Truths about biology. AOC's refusal to use the word women in her defense of abortion rights is troubling for several reasons. First, it undermines the very group she claims to defend. By reducing women to nothing more than menstruating persons, AOC erases the uniqueness of womanhood, treating biological women as interchangeable with anyone who experiences a menstrual cycle, including some transgender men and non-binary individuals. This linguistic shift is part of a broader effort to deconstruct gender, and it does more harm than good. Women are not defined solely by their reproductive systems, but to avoid the term altogether in favor of vague, politically correct jargon is an affront to biological reality and the identity of women everywhere. So there's a lot going on here, but my favorite part is that just this morning, uh, AOC uh, got into a tiff not related to this, actually on Sunday, she got into a tiff not related to this, uh, which was with Joe Manchin. 
and he ca called her young lady to be polite. He said, when this young lady, and she got really mad, and she said, in Washington, I usually know my questions of power are getting somewhere when the powerful stop referring to me as congresswoman and start referring to me as young lady instead. So now she wants to be referred to as congresswoman. So that changed because AOC doesn't remember her stupid from yesterday when she piles on the stupid of today. So let's just sit back at all of this. Okay, ready for the counterpoint. So Candace Owens was quick to point out the absurdity of AOC's remarks, highlighting the irony of a politician who claims to champion women's rights while simultaneously erasing women from the conversation. Owens's response, delivered with her characteristic wit and clarity, cut through the noise and brought the debate back to where it belongs, the truth. So counterpoint number one, AOC, to your point about menstruating persons, yuck. Um, a general rule that I like to follow in debate is that if I'm too scared to even acknowledge the existence of the group of individuals I'm purporting to be defending, I probably have no business in the debate. Say it with me, women. Women, it really is that easy. I cannot stress to you how unbelievably childish it is that you're too scared to acknowledge your own gender. Owens began her rebuttal by addressing the issue of language, noting that AOC's refusal to say women is not only bizarre, but also deeply disrespectful. As Owens correctly points out, if you are too afraid to acknowledge the group of individuals you claim to represent, you have no business speaking on their behalf. You should be in attendance nowhere that requires adult conversation. And I shudder to think that you are a sitting member of Congress. It truly is a sign of the times. Also, you claim women are being oppressed, but what can be more oppressing to women than the idea that we're no longer allowed to exist? You are quite literally promoting the concept that women need to be disappeared. It's a linguistical genocide that you're trying to commit. All to accommodate men, by the way, who happen to think that they're women. That's about as rich as irony possibly gets. Owens's critique of AOC's language highlights a broader problem within the progressive movement. The left has become so obsessed with inclusivity and political correctness that they are willing to distort reality to fit their ideological narrative. This is not just an issue of semantics. It is a battle over truth. When we allow language to be manipulated to the point where basic biological facts are ignored, we risk losing touch with reality altogether. Owens's unapologetic defense of women as women, not menstruating persons, is a breath of fresh air in a cultural climate that often prioritizes feelings over facts. Counterpoint number two to your point about patriarchal ideas, the patriarchy. I've got really bad news, AOC. If gender isn't real, then neither is the patriarchy. Poof, it's gone. If men can be women and women can be men, then abortion is now everybody's issue. You're upset with Governor Abbott, why? What's the difference between you and him? See how stupid works when it just keeps going on? <laughs> Gender is not a social construct. It is a biological reality. Men and women are different, and those differences should be celebrated, not erased. AOC's attempt to conflate women with anyone who menstruates is not only scientifically inaccurate, but also harmful to the cause of women's rights. Women deserve better than to be reduced to mere body parts in a debate. And lastly, to your point about the GOP attempting to reduce us to uteruses. I think I can speak on behalf of all women everywhere when I say that if we are forced to choose, we would much rather be known as uteruses than menstruating persons. <laughs> Seriously, it's disgusting. Over their rights. Beyond the issue of language, there is a far more important topic at hand, the sanctity of life. The Texas Heartbeat Bill seeks to protect the lives of unborn children by prohibiting abortions once a fetal heartbeat is detected, usually around six weeks of pregnancy. This is a significant milestone in the pro-life movement, and it reflects the growing recognition that life begins at conception. AOC's defense of abortion, even after a heartbeat is detected, reveals the moral bankruptcy of the pro-choice position. In her CNN appearance, she dismissed the six-week time frame as arbitrary and claimed that many women do not even know they are pregnant by that point. But this argument misses the point entirely. The question is not whether women are aware of their pregnancy at six weeks, 
The question is whether the unborn child, whose heart is already beating, has the right to live. Owens' response to AOC's pro-choice stance is grounded in the fundamental belief that all human life is valuable and deserves protection. Unlike AOC, who frames abortion as a matter of personal choice, Owens recognizes that the decision to end a pregnancy is not merely a personal one. It is a life-and-death issue that involves another human being, the unborn child. The Texas Heartbeat Bill represents a significant step forward in the fight to protect the most vulnerable among us. By banning abortions after a heartbeat is detected, the law affirms that life begins in the womb and that the state has a duty to protect it. As Republicans, we must continue to advocate for policies that defend the rights of the unborn. The right to life is the most fundamental of all rights, and it is one that we cannot afford to compromise. Another key point in Owens's critique of AOC is the issue of gender ideology. AOC's use of terms like menstruating persons is part of a broader push by the left to redefine gender and erase the distinctions between men and women. This ideology is not only confusing but also dangerous. As Owens pointed out, if gender is not real, then neither is the patriarchy. The left loves to talk about dismantling the patriarchy, but if men can be women and women can be men, then what exactly are we dismantling? This inconsistency reveals the absurdity of the left's gender ideology. You cannot claim to fight for women's rights while simultaneously denying the existence of women as a distinct category. Owens's point is clear. The left's obsession with gender fluidity is undermining the very causes they claim to support. If gender is nothing more than a social construct, then why should we care about issues like women's rights or the patriarchy? The left's contradictory positions on gender reveal that their true goal is not equality or justice, but the destruction of traditional values and norms. As conservatives, we must reject this dangerous ideology and reaffirm the importance of biological sex. Men and women are different, and those differences are worth celebrating. We must protect the rights of women without erasing the reality of womanhood itself. Owens's defense of gender reality is a crucial part of this fight, and we should stand with her in pushing back against the radical left's attempts to deconstruct gender. The Texas Heartbeat Bill is a landmark piece of legislation, but it is just the beginning. As more states consider similar laws, the pro-life movement is gaining momentum, and it is clear that the tide is turning in favor of life. AOC and her allies may continue to defend abortion, but their arguments are becoming increasingly out of touch with the American people. Candace Owens's powerful rebuttal to AOC's pro-choice rhetoric is a reminder that the fight for life is far from over. As Republicans, we must continue to advocate for policies that protect the unborn and uphold the sanctity of life. The Texas Heartbeat Bill is a significant victory, but there is still much work to be done. In conclusion, Candace Owens's response to AOC is a masterclass in conservative values, common sense, and truth. Owens's unapologetic defense of women, the sanctity of life, and biological reality is a reminder that we cannot afford to let the left's radical agenda go unchallenged. As Republicans, we must stand with Owens and continue to fight for a future where life is protected, women are respected, and truth prevails.